Hey everyone, Pastor Ian Wolf from the Pastor's Flashlight. On this Sunday Spotlight, we look at the Feast of Pentecost. Coming up in just a few short days. My apologies to you out there. I had hoped to get these Sunday Spotlights out to you earlier in the week. But that just hasn't happened yet. So my apologies to you. And I will try to do better next week. Our introit for this Pentecost Sunday is as follows. The Spirit of the Lord filleth the world. Alleluia. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. The Collect for the Day. Let us pray. O God, who didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them on this day the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Our epistle lesson for Pentecost Sunday is Acts 2, 1 to 13. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. Our Gospel lesson for Pentecost Sunday is John fourteen twenty three to 31 Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am a going away, and I will come again to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise. Let us go from here. Pentecost is one of the three high holy days of the church's
calendar. I imagine if you have any familiarity at all to the church or even just to the culture, you know what the other two high holy days of the church are, right? Christmas, where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus into the world, and Easter, right? Just what we celebrated 50 days ago, not quite yet, but soon to be 50 days ago, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those are two almost universally celebrated festivals of the church. And by universally, I mean both the culture observes these festivals, right? In fact, out of the two, Christmas is probably the highest one that is celebrated both by the church and the world, for different reasons, of course, though. And even the culture will pay homage and give a tip of the hat to Easter at times, right? Um, I hate to say it, but more often than not on Christmas and Easter is when we find our parishes, our churches, fuller than we do the rest of the year. Unfortunately, though, Pentecost then seems to get left behind. It's not nearly as uh, popular among the culture as Christmas is, and it almost isn't as important, not important, it almost isn't as celebrated with such joy as Easter is for the church. Pentecost seems to, take, to be the third wheel of the three great festivals. We love Christmas, we love Christmas carols, we love Easter and the lilies that decorate our altar and the joy that we feel after a long Lent celebrating Jesus' victory over death. And then 50 days later, we kind of remember that there's another holiday, Pentecost. But if you stop and think about it, we actually have those festivals somewhat backwards in our hearts and minds. Pentecost really comes at the top of all three of those festivals. Though it's third in line, Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, if it wasn't for Pentecost, we wouldn't know Easter, and we certainly wouldn't care about Christmas. Pentecost is the day of our salvation. It's the day when Jesus' victory over sin, death, and the devil becomes known and received by you and me, by Christians, by the church. Think about it. Pentecost, without it, there would be no apostolic proclamation. Jesus' three-year ministry would have simply died. Even with the resurrection, it would have remained flat. But the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles so that they might share that good news with the world. Had there been no Holy Spirit sent by Jesus and the Father, you and I today would never have known who Jesus was. There would have been no New Testament. There would have been no missionaries. There would have been no Europe. Think about how much the church formed and shaped Europe and Western society. No, Pentecost is important. It is a high holy day. In fact, for us, on this side of the equation between God and creation, it may just be the highest holy day of the church where you and I hear what Jesus did for us. Maybe you caught in that reading from Acts 2 that the two works of the Holy Spirit were speaking and listening. Through the Holy Spirit, the apostles spoke the mighty deeds of God. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, those standing around him, standing around them, heard them. Not just listened to a sound, but heard them in their own language. It spoke to the heart of who they were, 
there's that great line in there that they heard them in the language in which they were born, their native language. It spoke to who they were. The victory of Jesus rested firmly in their ears and thus in their hearts because the Holy Spirit came to empower the apostles to speak and for those around him and for those around them to listen. We pray this Sunday for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit to do both of those things again in us in our daily life and in our life of faith in the world. One for the Holy Spirit to fall upon us once more and to fill us with boldness to proclaim the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And two, that we might hear ourselves that same gospel again, and that others around us would hear that gospel in their own language, into that in which they were born into their very heart. So, as we come to Pentecost Sunday, let's not treat it like the third wheel. Let's treat it like Easter. Let's treat it like Christmas. Let's love it and celebrate and sing rejoicing that God in his goodness sent the Holy Spirit to tell us about Jesus, to give us faith so that we may be a light to the world, so that you and I in faith may share the gospel with others. Until next time, God's blessings and peace be with you. Again, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Comment below with some of your favorite things about Pentecost. Here we usually wear red on Sundays, as Sunday is red is the color of the Holy Spirit in the liturgical calendar and church. Uh, and like this video, give us a thumbs up. Again, thank you and peace be with you.